Okay guys, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the installation process of a Prometheus server. The first thing that we have to do is navigate to the Prometheus documentation page or specifically the download page so that we can get the URL for the binary for Prometheus. And you have a couple of different options. You can just download it from there or you can copy the URL and then go to your command line and we can just do a wget. So that's going to download the binary. And once we download the binary, we can see if we run an ls minus l, we can see that we have the binary right there and it's a tarred file at the moment. So we're gonna have to untar it. So we can untar it by running a tar xvf and then the name of that tar file that will untar it. And if we do an ls minus l again, we could see that we have a folder with all of the files for Prometheus. Now, we can move into the directory. And if I do an ls minus l, this is going to print out everything that came within that tar folder. Um, and so there's a couple of different things I want to point out. The first thing is this is going to be the uh, Prometheus uh, executable. Uh, we're going to have prometheus.yaml. This is going to be your configuration file. And then you have prompt tool, which is a command line utility that can help verify if configurations uh, are um, acceptable and everything is going to work once you actually start up Prometheus. And there's a couple of other things that aren't too important right now, like console and console libraries. That's more for dashboarding and visualization. We'll cover that when we get to the dashboarding and visualization section. But if you want to go ahead and start Prometheus, just do a dot slash Prometheus. That's going to execute the executable and um, just go ahead and just validate that there's no errors. And you should see a message that looks roughly similar to what you see on the screen here. And after it's up and running, we can go to our web browser, either on the machine um, or on a remote machine. If you're on the same machine as the Prometheus server, um, you can just go to localhost. However, if you're on a remote machine, just pass in the IP. And then for the port, just do port 9090. That's the default Prometheus port that is configurable if you need to change it. And if we navigate to localhost colon 9090 in our web browser, you should be able to see the um, Prometheus expression browser. And just to make sure that everything's up and running um, within the expression browser, um, just go ahead and type in the word up. So this is going to be the simplest uh, prompt QL query. So this is going to basically just tell us all of the different targets that we've configured that are currently either in an up state or a down state. So if you hit execute after that, you should see one instance or one target uh, in an up state. Uh, and so that's because even though we didn't configure anything, uh, Prometheus by default is configured to um, scrape itself. So it's going to actually monitor its own metrics as well uh, in case, you know, your Prometheus server is, um, you know, like running out of space or anything like that. And if you actually see the value right here, so the one means it's up. If you saw a zero, it means it's down. Um, you should see it with a value of one in an up state um, if everything went okay. All right, so let's go ahead and walk through everything that we just covered in these slides. So I'm on the Prometheus website right now, and we're gonna to go to the download section. And here in the first little block right here, this is going to be for the Prometheus binary, and you can select which version you want. Um, just make sure that you get the correct operating system. So I'm just gonna select this one here, and I'll just do a copy link address. Then in my terminal, I'm gonna run a wget so we can download it. And after that's complete, we can just do an ls minus l, and we should see the tar file here. So I'm gonna clear this. We're gonna do a tar xvf, and then that file name. That's going to untar this. And once that's done, there should be a directory, the Prometheus directory that we can move into. And here, if I do an ls minus la, we can see all of the different files. And all we have to do is a dot slash Prometheus, and that's going to start the Prometheus server. And now that we've started the Prometheus server, we can navigate to a, our web browser and we can just go to HTTP colon slash slash and then localhost if you're running this um, on your Prometheus server or if you're on a remote server, just make sure to pass in the IP address of your Prometheus server. We'll do localhost colon colon uh, 9090, which is the default port. And you should see something like this if everything is working. 
And just to make sure that everything is fully working, I'm going to just search up. So this is going to show us all of the different targets that are up. And we can see that we are, in fact, collecting metrics from our own Prometheus server. And we can see it's in an up state. So we've successfully installed and set up Prometheus. Now, when we start our Prometheus server like this, uh, it creates a couple of issues. And the first one is it starts the Prometheus process in the foreground, which means if we close out the terminal, we lose the process. Prometheus goes down and we have to restart it ourselves. And on top of that, it doesn't automatically start up on boot. So if we reboot the server, we're going to have to open up a terminal and start Prometheus again. And instead of doing that, I would prefer to be able to do something like a system CTL start Prometheus. So start it like any other process on a Linux machine. Um, I want to be able to create a systemd unit uh, for Prometheus so that it automatically starts it on boot and runs it in the background. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to walk you through the steps for that. And so the first thing that we have to do is I want to create a user called Prometheus. So this user is going to be responsible for running the Prometheus process. And the main thing that I want to cover real quick is the dash dash no dash create dash home flag. This is just make sure the user can't actually log in. And that's because this user is exclusively for starting the Prometheus process so that it's not like a traditional user that I would use to log in as. Now, the next thing that I want to do is uh, create a folder uh, in the Etsy directory. So I want to create a folder in slash Etsy slash Prometheus. This is where we're going to store the uh, Prometheus.yaml file. So this is a config file. And you'll see in Linux systems, the Etsy folder is usually for the configuration. And then I'm going to create another folder uh, ca called slash var slash lib slash Prometheus. This is where we're going to store all of that data. All of that, that time series database is going to reside in this folder. Then the next thing I want to do is update the permissions so that uh, that those two folders are owned by the Prometheus user and the Prometheus group. Now, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and download the binary for Prometheus. We're going to once again tar the file or untar the file. And now what we want to do is we want to copy the Prometheus executable to slash user slash local slash bin. So that's usually where you move all of your executables. And then we also want to copy the prom tool CLI utility uh, to that same folder. And we're going to update the permissions for both of those two files so that the Prometheus user owns both. And the next thing I want to do is copy the consoles folder. Um, you know, that was that one folder that I mentioned that was meant for dashboarding and visualization. So we're not going to worry about that uh, for now. Uh, it, that, that section is uh, pretty far into the course. So just go ahead and move it there for now. So move it into the slash Etsy slash Prometheus. And the dash R flag is going to be so that you can move a folder. And then the same thing goes for the console underscore libraries folder. We're going to move it into that same directory. Then once again, we're going to update the permissions. And we're going to do that for both the consoles folder as well as the console libraries folder. And the, the dash capital R flag is for changing permissions for a directory as well as all of the files uh, within it. Then what we want to do is copy the configuration file into the slash Etsy slash Prometheus folder. And once again, we're going to change the permission for that one file. And so now that we've moved all the files, the actual command to start Prometheus is going to look like this. And so what I'm doing here is, first of all, the dash U flag is going to make it so that it changes to the Prometheus user that's going to be running this command. And the executable is in slash user slash local slash bin Prometheus. And then we have to pass in a couple of flags. So we moved the config file. So we have to pass in the dash dash config dash file and provide the path to the configuration file. Do the same thing for storage. That's going to be in slash var slash lib slash Prometheus. And then provide the, um, the path for the web console templates and libraries. Once again, that's just for dashboarding and visualization. The next thing we need to do is create a unit service file for our Prometheus server service. And this is what the file is going to look like. And I'm just going to walk you through what each one of these lines do. So the first thing is this section is going to ensure that our service only starts after the network is up, because if Prometheus doesn't have access to the network, then it's ultimately useless to have it up. 
And the next thing is at the bottom, um, this just says start the service as part of the normal system startup, whether or not the local GUI is active or not. And if we take a look at the other stuff, uh, we can see that the user that's gonna be starting it is Prometheus, as well as the group is Prometheus. And then we have under ex exec start, this is gonna be the command that we wanna run for our service. This is the same command that we provided in the previous slide. So this is just responsible for starting the Prometheus process. After that, since we changed a uh, unit file, we have to do a sudo systemctl daemon reload. And then we can go ahead and start the Prometheus process. So we'll do a systemctl start Prometheus. And if we take a look at the status, we can see that it is active. Um, but we also want to make sure that Prometheus starts up automatically on boot. So the way to do that is to do a systemctl enable Prometheus. And if we do a status Prometheus now, we should see that the um, value should be set to enable. So this is going to automatically start up on boot. Okay, so I'm going to walk you guys through setting up a unit in system D to run Prometheus. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off by doing a user add. And we're going to pass in that no create home, which is going to ensure that this user can actually log in. And we're going to call this user Prometheus. Then I'm going to create a folder in slash Etsy slash Prometheus. And that's going to stay, uh, store the configuration file. And then I'm going to make one more folder, which is slash var slash lib slash Prometheus. This is going to store our data. And I'm going to change the permission. Uh, for those two folders to be Prometheus. And I'm going to do the same thing for the var lib folder. And I've already gotten the uh, files downloaded. So if I do an ls here, you can see I have my Prometheus directory that I've already untarred. So I can move into that. If you don't have that, go ahead and just do a wget and download it. And within here, I'm going to move the Prometheus executable or copy it into slash user slash local slash bin. And I'm going to do the same thing for prompt tool. And I'm going to update the permissions for those two files. And I'll do the same thing for prompt tools. Now I'm going to move the uh, console and the console libraries directory uh, into slash Etsy slash Prometheus. And I'm going to pass in the dash R flag because these are, in fact, directories. And I'll do this for the console libraries folder as well. And now we're going to change the permissions for the folder as well as all of the contents within those folders. So I'm going to do a chown, and this time we have to do the dash capital R flag, which is going to mean we're going to recursively go through the folder and change the permissions of all the files as well as the subdirectories.
And then I'm going to copy over the Prometheus.yaml file into slash Etsy Prometheus. And we'll change the permissions of that as well. Okay, so now let's create our service file in Etsy systemd system and I'll call this prometheus.service. And I'm just going to copy the configuration that was provided in the slides and just paste it in here. And then I can just go ahead and save the file. And we'll now have to do a sudo systemctl daemon-reload. And then I'll do a sudo systemctl start Prometheus. That's going to start the service. And if I do a systemctl status Prometheus, we can see that it's active and running. And let's make sure to enable it on startup. So I'll do sudo systemctl enable Prometheus. All right, and so now I can go to localhost colon 9090, and we can verify that Prometheus is in fact up and running.